The Small Business Show, episode 195 for Wednesday, October 31st. Happy Halloween 2018. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include Square's new payroll app at square.com slash go slash SBS, and a new one for us here, LinkedIn Jobs at linkedin.com slash SBS, where you can get 50 bucks off towards your first job post. We'll talk more about both of those here in a moment. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing? I'm good. Happy Halloween, Shannon. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. doing good. Halloween a big deal for you guys out there? Um, yeah, kind of is. I, you know, I I'm a musician too, right? Ah, and yes, so yes. Uh, tonight on Halloween night, we do this Madhouse thing. I mean, we we do it all year long, but Halloween is sort of our national holiday with Madhouse. It it all That's sort cool. of comes together with that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a crazy it, it there's a parade in Portsmouth, New Hampshire that. Uh, is not officially sanctioned, although it very much is, uh, you know, a part of the culture of the town. And it's just people that put this whole thing together and it's a bunch of volunteers and it, it's crazy. It's huge. This Halloween. That's parade. awesome. Really. I huge. love it. Yeah. Totally yeah. irreverent, not kid friendly. Uh, yeah. You know, I know. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As, kids are kids are grown. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's cool. Uh, I, I love, you know, we love Halloween out here. Any chance to dress up. We had a big Halloween party this past weekend oh, that nice. we went to and had a great time. Fun. Just, you know, get get, get you out of your comfort level. It does. Uh, pull you, you know, do different things. And uh, I, I think it's fantastic. It is. It's yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, very it's cool. Good. So, hey, what are we doing today? We're going to, I think we're going to talk about uh, listener questions. We've yes. got a bunch of questions. One of those in. times. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. We've got some questions and I have some tips that uh, to share too. So it's a, a tips and questions episode. So that's great. Yeah. If you have questions for a future show, feedback at businessshow.co, we would love to uh, take a shot at answering your questions. It'd be great. Yeah, for sure. All right. So Louis sent this in to feedback at businessshow.co. And he says, I have a business related question about my own domain name and email that goes with it. I want to try to start selling pictures online. And I read that it would be more serious or seen as being more serious if I had my own domain name instead of using, you know, contact Louis, the photographer at gmail.com or whatever. He says, my plan is as follows. I will register my domain name. I will sign up on SmugMug uh, and create my website using their services to sell pictures. When you do that, they give you, you know, essentially your name dot smugmug dot com. Says then I want to redirect all my traffic from mydomain.com to, you know, mydomain.smugmug.com. And then I want to set up email using, you know, users at mydomain.com. Says, so I have a few questions. Number one, where do you suggest I register a domain? Number two, should I settle for anything other than a dot com? How easy is it to do this redirect from mydomain.com or whatever to my smug mug URL? And uh, how do I set up email with my at domain.com address? Uh, so it's a good, good question. It, it really is. And it, and it shows you're thinking about all the right things, Louis. So, so great. And thanks for sending this in. And, and for those of you that are, that, uh, that, that cross listen and also listen to Mac geek gab and a different podcast. I do. I, we also answered this question over there because it, it really does sort of fit in, in both realms. Um, and and yeah. there's some benefit of that answer that I will share with this audience too. So yeah, and we're gonna put a a, a little. Bit, I have some business uh, spin that we're gonna add to it as well. Yeah, good, good. So good. Um, in terms of the domain, it, it it does and doesn't matter where you register the domain. Once you've registered a domain, it's registered everywhere, so you don't have to worry about where you choose to do it. I have been using GoDaddy for a very long time. And they've done well for me. I know some people hate them. And so if you choose not to use them, that's also fine. Uh, what I like about them, and it's worth checking out to make sure that whatever registrar you use will do this. Uh, I know a lot of folks like Namecheap as well these days. Um, I, you know, GoDaddy answers a lot of the other questions that you already have. So once I, if you register a domain with GoDaddy, the redirect from your domain.com to whatever other website you want to do is just easy and automatic 
in, included in your domain when you register there. So, so that's a super easy thing. Email forwarding is also included over there. Usually not most of the time that, that gets, it's a, I had like one domain that didn't have it and I had to pay a dollar a year or something to add it. But otherwise it seems to be included with every domain that I have, but this is just forwarding. So you have to have an email address somewhere else, like your Gmail address, and then you can forward mail from your, you know, it's sent to your domain over to whatever your other email is. It does get a little tricky sending email out from your domain if you don't actually have an account there, if it's just forwarding. So you may want to also pay your registrar to host your email, and most of them will do that. Um, so that and, and that gets a little tricky. So you, you may just want to have your registrar. You may want to pay them a little extra and have them host your domain, your email account in its entirety so that you can both receive and send email. Yeah, that I makes think it's life, a good idea. Yeah, it just yep. makes life a little easier. Um, yeah. So so that gets uh, that gets a couple of your questions answered. One of the, the, the well, go ahead. I, I want to come well, back to the dot com thing, but, okay. but if you've got stuff yeah. to add, yeah, I have a question. Well, I have a, I have a question, and I know sure. you may have talked about this technical part of it, but you know, I'm a real, I'm I'm always very sensitive of keeping people on my website uh, mm -hmm. for what this is or another, and and I understand Smug Mug is the way to go, or it seems to be in the photography business yes. and all things. Uh, I think another option to look at is if you you know, create your, your website or register a site that can use WordPress, which is, uh, you know, one of the most popular, uh, we use uh, it. Yep. We use it and I use it for a bunch of stuff and it's a hugely popular and tremendously versatile, uh, uh, program to run your website. You know, there's a ton of smug mug plugins that would allow you to effectively host your, those smug mug, uh, oh. images and everything on your website. So, so you don't have to into... forward people to smug mug. You host Correct. your own website and then using yep. a WordPress plugin, you're yep. slurping your content from smug mug to show on your website. And that way people never leave your domain. I like right. this. I like yeah, this a lot. It, yeah. Now Louis, you know, it may take a little bit more technically, technical, you know, work to get this done. And if you're not familiar with WordPress or whatever, but there's some great, like I use a, a, a host provider called bluehost.com and they have very, you know, good packages that are inexpensive for WordPress. They do domain registry. They'll walk you through the whole thing to where you just like, okay, I, I want this domain name. I want to do WordPress. They'll do the install for you. I want this kind of stuff. There, there's a lot of, of, of options, but I like... In order to, again, keep more control, because then you can have a blog where you yeah. can write maybe some news articles, and that's really good for the search engines, and you have content, and people can come up and leave comments. I love this. Da, 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 da. So it, it would be another level, and maybe you're not ready to do that yet, but it's certainly something to think about, if not now, then in the future. No, you're you're right, because if, if people get redirected, I mean, it's great to be able to have your domain on your business cards, right? Yeah. But yeah. but if people get redirected to Smug Mug, if in the future you ever set up your own domain, they may have your Smug Mug page bookmarked and now they're yes. just going to go there. They're not necessarily exactly. going to come back around. So and when they oh, tell I people, like oh, this guy's photographer's great. Oh, just go to Smug Mug and search for da da. And, and that may be fine, you know, if that's what you want. Totally. But I'm I'm kind of a control freak and I like to. I, I want to control the whole experience that the customer has. I, I want them to be able to learn more about me quickly. And if and if you're going to run a website anyway and just redirect it, you might as well try. You know, well think about WordPress, and then it gives you just a, the 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 upside to it. You know, as you move forward and get a little bit more sophisticated over time, is tremendous. It's yeah, it's tremendous. I I agree. Yeah. It it you know hosting your own you want to control your own destiny and and yeah. there's something to be said for this yeah yeah, yeah. Harder. yeah it's sure. harder it's harder at the beginning no doubt about it or more uh, expensive i mean you can hire someone to do this it, stuff it, yeah yeah you can certainly hire somebody in in that case you know you may want to go to uh fiverr.com or uh upwork is another place that you can hire a consultant to, to help you set these your wordpress site up and you know that, guru guru.com has some good stuff guru. too cool. yep Yep. Awesome. So, yep. so let's talk about the dot com thing. You know, our our website is businessshow.co. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's interesting. And I, I will share kind of how the conversation went on Mac Geek Gab because um, it, my thought was it depends on who and I still feel this way. It depends on who your audience is. Right. If you're 
like, you know, we do a podcast here. I realize that lots of people know what podcasts are, but the reality is if you are listening to any podcast, you have increased your level of technical acumen at some level. Right. So like I I know that when you listen to us, you know that businessshow.co is not businessshow.com. At least I hope you do. And I think it's a reasonable expectation that that sort of fits. But if you're going to weddings, you know, it's it, I, I this yeah. is going to sound terribly uh, right. <laughs> generalized, but, you know, it, it does it need to pass the the non technological grandmother test. I, I don't want yeah, us to just say yeah. the grandmother test because there's a lots of really high tech grandmothers out there these days. Sure. Man. But, you know, you want to get someone that, that was not raised on technology, is not interested in technology, knows they have to deal with technology. And you want them as a customer, if that's someone that you are targeting, which in a photography business, you might be. I don't know. Right. I don't know who your your clientele is. But if it's those people that that aren't steeped in technology, whatever you say to them, they're going to hear dot com. And so in that sense, yes, dot com is important, but only in that sense. Otherwise, it no, it doesn't matter and as we had this conversation over on on Mac Geek Gab, my co-host John Braun, John F. Braun, as he likes to be called, said, uh, well, what about getting a dot photo domain? Ah, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, duh. Right. Yeah. I forget. Cool. And this is this is my own, you know, uh, I, you know, when I started registering domains 20 years ago, there was no dot photo domain. So I don't think about that as a real good option. But it's a great option if you if you want to be, you know, uh, Louis dot photos. Now, my guess is that's already taken, but you can come up with something creative that works and and represents your business and your brand. And if you can do dot photos and brand that on your business card and in your literature in a way that works really well, well, then that works really well. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah, I think they're great. And I also would would consider you know, if you're a photographer and you're local, you know, is thinking about some localized keywords that you might, in, you know, in, include in that domain. Yes. Because that'll really help your search. So if you're in, you know, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and that is the really the places that you search, maybe it's, you know, as a good name because your name is Louis. Yeah. Um, uh, He's in but, Montreal, by the way, but that, okay. that's so okay. Montreal. So, you know, it's Montreal f- photography, boom, whatever. Because when people are searching for those, yeah. uh, for photographers, they're going to find, you know, I'm looking for a local photographer to come out to my wedding, my kids, whatever. Uh, having that in your domain can be very helpful. Yep. Very helpful. You know, yep. just, we, we've done SE shows about search engine optimization here. I'm sure you know a lot, Louis, about, you know, uh, you know, your Yelp reviews and all that kind of stuff, how that helps you so much. And that would be another thing to feature on your site. All those great reviews that people, you know, are leaving for you. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. That's Thanks, Louis. Stuff. That's good. I, I, while we're in the geek realm here, I'm going to stay here for a minute, Shannon, if you don't yeah. mind. I have a couple of tips. Sure. So I recently started kind of messing around with alternative operating systems and alternative software And one of the first things that I was led to is something I've known about for a long time. And now I've started using it. I canceled my subscription to Microsoft Office. And now I use, right. And now (laughs) I use something called LibreOffice. Now, I don't use Office every day. I'm a Mac user. I have pages and numbers, right? And they come free with Mac OS and they're great pieces of software. But I have to work with you know, people that use all kinds of different yeah, computers. Exactly. So I definitely need to be able to not only open, but uh, manipulate and save Word and Excel documents in particular. And sometimes PowerPoint, right? Mm-hmm. LibreOffice is a free office. I, I, I guess calling it a clone is probably the right way to describe it, although they would probably say, no, no, no. You know, they get all hand wavy about the the way to describe it. It's an open source project. It is Microsoft Office. It's It was written, you know, kind of, it, it came from the, the Linux community, but, and, and there's lots of these. It's, it's open office, I think, at its core. So I people see. have developed this thing that that is feature compatible, file format compatible, 100% with Microsoft Office, but it is open source. 
And then there are different flavors of this. And and the one that really feels the most comfortable on a Mac and also on a Windows machine is LibreOffice, L-I-B-R-E Office. It's really fantastic. I started using it, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And for my purposes, it has served 100%. Like, I just don't care that I'm not launching Excel or Word. I'm just, you know, using this. And it can save things back. It, you know, you can set it by default to save things in the Excel and Word formats. So it's just like when you open it in Excel or Word, you make your changes. You, you know, if you're doing track changes in in Word or whatever, you do that, fine, save, send the document back to somebody else. There's no translation to do because you're actually running a thing that that speaks Office natively. And it really nice. is awesome. And it And it's free. Right. So depending, there are certainly going to be scenarios where in your business, it makes sense to buy or pay for a subscription to Microsoft Office. But for so many of us, I don't think that's the case. And I think you can save some money uh, going with LibreOffice like I've done here. So that's awesome. I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big deal. It, it is a big deal. Have you ever used any of these open office? Um, uh, we clones? used to use open before they, you know, uh, office went to this, you know, hundred bucks a year, five yeah. years or whatever, we used to use this all the time yeah. and, and it, it worked great. But as you mentioned, the interoperability is the, is the issue, Absolutely. you know, none of them had, well, I shouldn't say this, but I, uh, you know, a true round trip, like yeah. I want to open Excel, I want to edit it in open office or Libre office, and I want to save it as Excel and and then send it back. And, and it. there's always a, a little step. In, like, I love numbers. I think it's fantastic on the Mac. Yeah, but and you I have could, to do a little I, step in there to get that right. You have to do that expo- export well, and, and this and that. it's translating so. to numbers and then back to Excel. So you're losing something in there when you do it with, when I do it with numbers. There's always like, it. you know, the formatting gets all effed up or whatever. And, yeah. and with LibreOffice, that doesn't happen because there is no... There's no translation. You are just opening oh, an office great. document. Nice. You are working with it and you save it. Yeah. So the round that's trip cool. is is just like it is with Excel or, or nice. Word or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's a big, no, it's that's great. A big deal. Yeah. 90 percent of the time I just have all my spreadsheets like my spreadsheets are in numbers because I that's just right yeah. there and it's fine. But if you know, I'm working, you know, we work a lot with ad agencies and we get proposals sure. going back and forth and it might go back and forth five times in the course of an afternoon. I can't be translating that back and forth to numbers. I, that's yeah, why that's yeah, when yeah, I need yeah. Excel. And I certainly yeah. can't ask this ad agency that's spending tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> oh, hey, do you mind? You know, like yeah, yeah. that's I'm not even going to ask the question. Right. They've chosen Excel. I'm fine with it. You know, it's how it works. Um, yeah. But but I just don't need it. LibreOffice has been fine. No one has said anything about, you know, oh, this file won't open. So, yeah, no, it's great. That's cool. Yeah, really it's cool. very cool. Yep. It's good. Very nice. I like Along it. those same lines, um, I wound up, it's a long story, but I've got this old, relatively old, I, I don't know, it's actually not that old, maybe four years, maybe three year old uh, Dell laptop. And I got it because we were testing some things that you couldn't test on a Mac or whatever. And I had an issue with Windows on it. And it was I was going to need to wipe the thing clean. But then as it turned out, actually, I won't get into the gory details. I actually couldn't wipe this thing clean like the the boot sector of Windows got so bad that I was going to need to format this drive without using Windows. Like I couldn't even boot to the Windows recovery USB stick. It was that bad. And I thought, well, wow. I got to be able to like, how do I boot this machine? Like, this is insane. I I, I want to wipe it clean. But even Windows on a USB stick won't boot because it sees, you know, the other remnants of Windows on the drive. And then it gets into this loop where it just, you know, gets stuck in a circle. So I downloaded a copy of Ubuntu Linux and I I booted. I'm a geek, right? So I booted that and I formatted the drive and I was going to start reinstalling Windows on it. And because my son wanted to use this thing, actually, we were waiting for Apple to make their laptop announcements, which they made yesterday. So now I can I can buy a Mac laptop with some confidence that it's not going to change right away. But my son wanted (laughs) to use this thing for, you know, for a month or two. And I saw I was going to put Windows back on it. And I was like, wait a minute, this interface with Ubuntu Linux is awesome. I don't want to put Windows on this thing. I just want to put Linux on it. And then I don't ever have to deal with the Windows convolution ever again. And sure. so, so we did, we put Ubuntu Linux on this 
And and then I learned about a flavor of Ubuntu Linux called elementary.io, and I'll, we'll put a link to it. This is, again, it's a free operating system, open source supported, very modern, feels very normal. It's like, I know the concept of Linux sounds really scary. It's not anymore. It feels just like a Mac or a Windows machine when you boot it up. It's It's not, you don't have to like learn arcane terminal commands or any of that. There's a beautiful graphic interface. And especially with elementary IO that is built to feel like a Mac. And it yeah, does. It looks, it's great. It, yeah, it's really yeah, cool. It's fantastic. So if you have, especially like an old, you know, windows box that you want to, you know, repurpose or even an old Mac, like yeah. the same software will boot both of these, these machines now. So if you've got a 10 year old Mac, I would re- strongly consider putting elementary.io on it. You can run LibreOffice. Of course, you can run, you know, Chrome and Firefox and all those web browsers that you use and really turn it into a workable machine that still gets current security updates. Whereas a 10 year old Mac is now off the yeah, list. Apple's right. not that's updating right. those for security things anymore. And and it, it, this, it runs really lean. It's really efficient. Uh, I, I'll be perfectly honest. Even Apple, as much as I love them, their operating system has gotten pretty bloated. You know, it's not the most efficient thing, especially on older hardware. Windows is even worse. Elementary or, you know, Ubuntu, which is really what it's the elementary is just sort of the skin on top. It's it's just Ubuntu Linux underneath ah, it. Sure. And it's super smooth and happy and uh, it runs better than any other operating system on that particular piece of hardware. So, yeah. Very so, cool. That's, anyway. a good, that's another great tip. Great tip. I know it's a little geeky, well, but not. But, yeah, that's you right. Know, yeah. Well, if you, especially if you have an office in a, in a bunch of computers and you're that's trying it. to maximize, you're like, well, I don't want to go spend a thousand or you know whatever, especially on Macs, you know, fifteen hundred bucks. Yep. Two grand on a, on a uh, a new Mac. I think that's a a great thing to explore. Or if you have kids and you want to hand them something to bang away on. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Very cool. It is cool. And I never would have thought of it if I wasn't stuck at, you know, 2 a.m. in this, you know, pickle of how the hell do I reformat this stupid thing? Like, all I want to (laughs) do is wipe it clean. Why is this hard? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, for sure. Everything's hard. Everything's (laughs) hard. That's yeah. You're trying to do that stuff. Exactly. Hey, I want to talk about our two sponsors, Shannon, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. The first sponsor for today is the new Square Payroll app. Everything that you can do on a desktop, you can do in the app. This is cool, right? You're running payroll. You have a business. You don't need the headaches accompanied with doing that by hand, certainly. But sometimes you're out and about. You don't necessarily run your business from your desk all day, every day. And this is where Square Payroll, with their new Square Payroll app, totally shines because They let you do everything in the app. It's super cool. And I've tested this out. It's really amazing. You can set it up like totally from scratch. You can set it up. You can pay your team. You can uh, do time cards for your W-2 employees. You can even manage your contractors in here. Uh, It calculates your tax withholdings, your payments, and your filings at no extra cost, right? Right. So it, it's very cool. It's 29 bucks a month plus $5 per employee per month. And it, I've used this thing. It, it feels, it feels like a mobile app because it is a mobile app, but it's yeah, got nice. so many features in it. It's crazy how, just how well this works. I'm, I, I'm just blown away by, uh, by how smooth they've done this. So you got to check it out. Uh, if you're always on the go, like me, check out the new payroll app from square you can pay your team from anywhere and never miss payroll again search for square payroll in the apple or google app uh you know google play app stores or you can visit square.com slash go slash sbs and we'll have that link in our show notes our sincere thanks to square and the new square payroll app for sponsoring this episode our next sponsor is linkedin jobs Here's the thing. As a small business owner, you know that the right hire can make a huge impact on your business. I don't know about you, Shannon, but I have hired the wrong person at times. And man, it like I, I have almost cratered a business because of that. It just I think we've like, done a show, a show about that. I think we did. Yeah, absolutely. So we always say you got to hire, you know, hire slowly, hire smartly. Well, here's the thing. 
Sometimes the best person for the job you need to fill is not actively looking for a job. They might already be in a job, but if they knew about the job that you wanted to offer them, they might just take it. So do you go to the regular job boards to find those people? No, because they're not on them. But where are they? They're on LinkedIn, right? 70% of the U.S. workforce is on LinkedIn, even if they're not looking for a job, especially if they're not looking for a job. It's still a place where you go to keep your stuff updated, check in on what your friends and colleagues are doing. You can read posts. It's got, you know, a social network component. People are there all the time. And that's why a new hire is made every 10 seconds using LinkedIn. I always like to say, you know, we talk about unfair competitive advantage. That's what LinkedIn jobs has because they've got the workforce there, even if they're not looking for a job. And they say that nine out of 10 members on LinkedIn are open to new opportunities, even if they haven't recently visited the top job boards. So you got to check this out. Hurry to linkedin.com slash SBS and you get 50 bucks off your first job post. I have used this. You might find your candidate within that first $50 of your spend and then it costs you nothing. So this isn't like there's no hidden cost here. If you if you can find your candidate in that first 50 bucks, it, it, like this is a huge value. So that again, it's LinkedIn.com slash SBS to get 50 bucks off your first job post. Let me do it one more time. LinkedIn.com slash SBS. Terms and conditions apply as always. But go check them out. And our thanks to LinkedIn Jobs for sponsoring this episode. That's cool. Yeah. Very useful sponsors. Very useful. You know, we always try to do that, uh, and, you know, keep keep things real and stuff that you can uh, really use right away. And everybody's on LinkedIn. <laughs> so that's just a great use of their uh, their network and their infrastructure. It's Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's cool. cool. Very cool. What's next, man? All right. Let's talk about a question. We have a couple of questions. We'll see if we can get to them both or how long we, uh, okay. we talk. We'll cool. certainly get to one. Let's talk about a question from Carol. Okay. Uh, Carol writes, uh, I run a dog boarding business. And recently, a dog that we were boarding was injured. I thought I had handled everything correctly. I paid all the bills, et cetera. But I just received a notice in the mail that I am being sued. Uh, I am not sure what I should do first. So it sounds like you know, you've probably never been through this before. Um, I think the thing she should do first time. is 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 um, proudly uh, be welcomed into the club. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Yep. It happens uh, to the best of us. Yep. Yeah. And, and we did a show. Uh, it's episode 145. We'll put a, a, a link in the show notes for it, uh, Carol, that we recommend you listen to. It's, you know, what to do when your m small business gets sued. But but yep. we'll talk about a couple of things here. I mean, generally speaking, I, I, I think, you know, correct me if you have another idea, Dave, but I, I think you need to have a discussion with an, an attorney. Oh, yeah. Uh, even, if it, even if it's just a small claims lawsuit, you need to get some tips and, and uh things on how to respond and it, and you know, with the timeline and how that kind of stuff. And, and one of the things that I just want to revisit uh, and hopefully, and maybe Carol can, you know, this, this, this works for you or you've done this already or not, but we, we always suggest that you find a good attorney uh, before you need them, just like your accountant, you know, as part of your board of advisors. And we've, we've discussed that uh, ad nauseum here on the show, but you want to be surrounded by these folks that you may need in the future. So they already know who you are because it's a different conversation when you call up and say, Hey, Bob, I need some help. This guy, but about, you know, this, and they already know your business. They know yeah. you, who you are. That You've already paid them maybe you. a little bit here and there. Yeah. 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 Maybe a little bit. And, and so, and it's just less stressful. Uh, you'll, you know, you'll have more time to find the right one for me. Um, it's all about personality. I mean, you got to meet some minimum requirements, but if, if, yeah. if you pass the beer, the beer test, and I would actually enjoy having a beer, a cup of coffee with you, you, you're the person that I'd like to, you know, to, to do business with. Um, you know, you should, if, if you don't have this yet, Carol, you typically, you have about 30 days to respond, but that click, that clock is, you know, it moves faster than you might think. Uh, so you need to start looking for an attorney if you don't, and maybe reaching out to your other uh, peers, small business owners that you, uh, you know, that you know, and say, hey, have you used anybody? You know, this kind of thing. I think the referrals are the way to go. Yeah. Oh, for yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, you got. Yeah. yeah, you got to find. I, I always, if you, it, oftentimes as a small business owner, you might be serving other people who own small businesses, either directly yeah, yeah. at their business, or if you're serving, you know, like 
people at their homes. Most of those people have to work for a living. And some of them are going to be small business people. Oftentimes, people who are attorneys, uh, you know, I mean, that's a it can be a lucrative profession. Oftentimes they will hire other small business people to do things for them. And so you might already know some attorneys who are your clients becoming a client of theirs. Man, you've already got trust there. They're going to like you. They've already been paying you. So they, you you know, like there's already like a a huge relationship there that you can, I don't want to say leverage, but I mean, that's true. Uh, I mean, it, it, but it's it's leverage from both sides, right? You're like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I know this person. I I know that if you've been sued, like you served me really well. That's crazy. It's, okay, well, let's take a look. You know, and you're not it like this person isn't suspect of you and your business when you're walking and yeah, saying, that's right. Help me, I just got sued. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So no, I think yeah. that's a, a really good point. Uh, you know, always look to your client list to see who's the first you know, place. business you can use. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. For a, I mean, uh, for everything, not just attorneys, yeah. accountants, yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah, you know yep. why not? Yep. And you know That's their right. business too. You know that they paid you on time. Like you've already vetted them yeah. as well. You know it's yeah, it's good. Yep. That's really cool. That would be a great, uh, you know, a, a discussion to have about when people register, sign up for your service. How much data can you ask them for? Like, oh, what business are you in? You know, and maybe that's the way to do it. We we love to use the services yeah, be of our clients. Honest. Yeah, yeah, just be yeah. honest. You know, if you'd like to share what business you are in, we would love to have you as a resource. So, if you're a carpenter or a contractor of some sort, electrical contractor, when we have problems, we would certainly like to use first. That's I love that concept. Yep. Yeah, that's really yeah. smart. Yeah, and who yeah. wouldn't? Be, I mean, well, some yeah. people wouldn't, but but most people would be happy to fill that out. Yeah, like, oh, great. you want to patronize me? Great, awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then I, th- so you know, uh, Carol, go back, listen to that episode. Um, and I think it's also, from my perspective, the most important thing to remember about you know when being involved in a lawsuit or anything like that is that it can really wreak havoc on your business and your personal life, and it's incredibly distracting, and. I think from my perspective and having been involved in a few of these over the years, the the focus should be on getting through it as soon as possible Mm. and, you know, as quick as you can. And you certainly want to do the right thing, but you'll hear us say this on this, you know, the episode where we mentioned is you need to leave your sense of justice uh, at at home, you know, and in my case, my ego, because I get frustrated and I'm like, I'm right. You know what? I know this. Yeah, right. Righteousness and and justice are, are valiant pursuits for disposable time and money. Yeah. And really very expensive. But but that's the thing is it has to be disposable time and money. Otherwise you just need to get to brass tacks and, and figure out a way out. That's right. That's right. I think so. And and again, if a good attorney will kind of advise you like that, I think, and say, look, OK, what are we trying to achieve here? Uh, you know, do we do we want to make this go away as quick as we can? And what's you know, do you have insurance? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, hopefully you're talking to your insurance provider as well. If, you know, you're running the you know, dog boarding type place. Um, but you want to try to move through it as quick because it can really distract from the rest of your business and cause a lot of other harm. That's true. Uh, In this scenario, you know, it's worth making a phone call, perhaps even the first phone call to your insurance yeah. company to find yep. out if they are going to be able to represent you. Like That's if right. you're being sued for something against which you are insured, i.e. Yep. you've been paying premiums, then basically what you do is forward this lawsuit to your insurance company. Uh, you got to yeah, make sure they handle it because it's you on the hook at the end. But sometimes they that yeah. would be exactly what happens. Yeah. And they uh, depending upon the type of suit, I've had this happen you know, both ways. Yeah. They will either provide an attorney or they'll say, hey, uh, what's your attorney? You know, who's your attorney? If you have one, uh, we'd like to just contract with them to to, to do this oh, and they can bill us directly. Yeah, huh. and both both ways, and it probably de- maybe depends on the seriousness of it or sure. you know, the, do- the dollar amount involved. Um, but uh, you know, go listen to that episode back there. You know, at episode one forty five uh, from earlier this year, and you know, let us know how how it works out. Keep keep us posted. Very you know, cool. Oh, that's good. good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do we have time to, to uh, take this last question, you think? Uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, okay, man. Great. Yeah, go. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, so Jacob writes, uh, I'm interested in selling my business. I've been approached by a business broker that says they can get us top dollar based on their connections. Uh, unfortunately, they want about $40,000 up front to represent us. Yep. My partner, my partner wants to do it. I am a little suspicious. What do you guys think? 
Uh, thanks for your show, by the way. We listen each week. Um, so again, we've done a few episodes about selling your business. We we all the way back from uh, episode sixty one a few years ago. But we'll we'll link those in the show notes, and uh, you can hear from other business owners that have sold their companies uh, up there. And then we also inter- on episode sixty one we interviewed Bob Gruall of C Point Business Advisors, and I thought he was great, uh, an independent voice uh, on on important parts of uh, of selling your business. You know, I'm not a big fan of paying big chucks of money up front f- for promises. Um, and I've done it. And sometimes it's worked out great. And other times it hasn't. Uh, I I would be much more. Have you uh, have you successfully worked with a business broker? I mean, specifically one of these that wants you to pay 30 to 50 grand up front for them to put your, you know, mar- go to market plan together and no. all that stuff. No. So after talking to my board of advisors a yes. couple of times, I've ran from these kind of guys as fast as I could. Same. I, uh, they, they're nice. Yeah. They'll feed you lunch. If you oh, go yeah. to a seminar oh, for a day, you got it. They'll you feed you it. lunch and, and tell you all about this great stuff. And you can learn a lot like you can with everything. There's yes, always lessons to be learned. But I, I, I went to one of these, I don't know, five, six years ago or whatever, maybe actually yeah. more than that now that I think about it, but you, you know, and, and it was, they wanted whatever, $38,000 to, to, you know, b- put together yeah. this thing to market my business to folks. And my question to him was, well, why do you need that? Like, if, if you're so confident you can sell it, why do you need me to pay you up front? <laughs> Of course, yeah, people don't not. like to hear that. That's, <laughs> yes. you know, but that's the small business mentality is like, yeah. I agree. I agree. And they tried to sell me, oh, no, you want this put together the right way. I'm like, well, maybe you want it put together the right way. This sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah. And and if you want to cut a commission of my sale, which, which of course they do, that's how they make their big money. It's like, don't yeah. ask me to pay you to then allow you to earn a commission. That's crazy. Yeah. That was my the feeling. Red, th- yeah, I agree. And, I, and I've been to a few of those kind of seminars and got, you know, and everything. And, and I, I, one of the red flags that I, I often notice is when they they spend a lot of time explaining why your advisors, uh, your peers will tell you it's not a good idea to use their service. <laughs> and I would say that if you really pay attention, you start to hear that, oh, don't bother what your attorney says because they, they're they in, interested in X. Uh, don't bother with this, you know, and, and I, I'm always like, well, what, what, that doesn't make any sense, you know? So I, I would ask your advisors what they think. Uh, you can do some, certainly, um, you may probably already I did it, Jacob, you know, some online research from these kind of companies. Uh, I would listen to, you know, back at least to episode 61 um, from C Point Business Advisors. Those guys don't take a huge chunk of money up front. And, uh, you know, I have not used their services, but um, I, I, was, I met him through another business owner who's been on this show uh, that sold their company and was very happy with the way that they uh, they represented them. Um so, so yeah, I, I would do a little more due diligence and um, try to get your partner on board. Make sure that uh, you know, because that can cause a lot of friction if they think they're, um, uh, you know, be not being listened to, and they they think yeah. that you're you're yeah. missing out on a big opportunity. You know that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think you're you're smart to be questioning it, and I would stay away from those kind of guys. Yeah, the problem is it. It, there is the allure of oh you've been you know grinding it out on this in this business and you you know there's in the yeah. in the back of your mind there's this thought of oh yeah someday you know i can just sure. collect millions and pot walk away <laughs> yeah pot of gold <laughs> yeah. right and and that may well be there like there Maybe. They, but here's the thing if you haven't already had other businesses coming to you and saying hey I, I want to buy that might not be the right deal, but if that hasn't happened, there might be something that you do need to change about your business, right? You yeah, might be in yeah. cash flow mode, not growth mode, or you might be in growth mode and not cash flow mode. So it is helpful to get the advice of someone. Uh, but, you know, and along those lines, I would go to like, if you're really looking for this, I, honestly, go set up an appointment with score, right? Yeah, and and bring idea. your business partner with you. And and talk through this. Those guys or, or women. I mean, I don't know, you know, which mentors you'd be uh, uh, assigned to, right? But those people at Score have some experience here, especially 
often in your local market, if that matters to your business and might really be able to kind of give you some guidance on, on how to do that. So if you, if certainly before you go and spend the 40 grand, I I would definitely, you know, uh, go visit with score. So, well, you're going to find at score, you'll find some of those, the mentors that have just been through, you know, they've been through this process and they can tell you. And, and, uh, I can recall, you know, Bob from C point, talking about, oh, you should be approaching your competitors and let's figure out the yes. market and let's look at this. And and he will poke holes into, you know, your business, which is what he's supposed to do and say, well, this works great and this doesn't, and this is valuable and this is not. Right. And the other folks are telling, are, are kind of pump you up, right? Oh, we're going to get this for you. We're going to do this. You guys are awesome, but write us a check first. So, uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, write us yeah, a check think, first. No. Yeah, yeah. I think you're on the right track, uh, you know, doing that, that due diligence. I think it's great. Hey, before we go, because I know we're getting ready to wrap up and I forgot, I wanted to make a comment about domain ownership back on Lewis's first comment. And I I, I think it's really important if you're, especially if you're in a partnership or any kind of uh, joint venture, um, you know, you need to keep control of that domain. And it's kind of like a prenup. Nobody ever wants to talk about uh, when things go bad, you know, but things do go bad sometimes. And just like accounting, I vowed many years ago that I would never uh, turn over accounting to someone else after I got, you know, screwed royally in in a bad way when I was much younger. And I'm not a great accounting guy. So I always have a good partner with me, uh, but I'm in, I I keep control of the money. It's just, it's just my thing. Um, And the same, I think with domains. Now you can start an entity, you know, if you have a partnership, you're doing an LLC or you're doing an S corp or a C corp, whatever you're doing. The entity ultimately will own that domain, but uh, it's just one little uh, thing that you can do to uh, help help keep control. I think is to you know go register that domain that you guys decide on. You know, and and I think it's an important important tip. Yeah. No, I yeah, I have yeah. I have been on both sides of that. Uh, yeah. When we bought what now is Mac Observer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. the, it was not Mac Observer, right? And the reason the yeah. name changed is because the person from whom we were buying it did not own the domain webintosh.com. It was, uh, you know, some dude that it, this was a young guy when he started it. Yeah. He was, of course, even younger and yeah. he didn't have a credit card, but his buddy Bob had one. <laughs> and so it. Bob registered the domain and Bob was yeah. a little dickish, you know, Yeah, and Bob right. wouldn't transfer it. So, I mean, yeah. thankfully it all worked out for us and, and really worked yeah. out because we paid less because he was selling yeah. us less. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's an important thing to have a discussion because a lot of times what happens with new small businesses, you know, it's you're just flying by the CC to your pants and maybe you didn't start the LLC yet or didn't do whatever. And somebody's got a oh, I set up a GoDaddy and I went ahead and registered this. I, I would just say if because obviously, you know, you're the reasonable one. We're going to make that. Uh, we're going to presume that right now. Of course. You're the one. Yes. So you're going to be reasonable if things don't go right. So you're not going to hold it over their head. You're going to say, okay, we're going to split the business up. Here's the value. Here's what happens. Here's the domain uh, versus coming into work one day and having that domain routed to someone else's company. Absolutely. And yeah. I've been there and it's not pleasant. <laughs> That's a bad conversation. Yep. Uh, so. Yeah. So anyway. And, and I will that. say this. Once you do create, because 99% of the time you're going to need to register the domain long before you need to have a business entity. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so it often does happen in that order. Once you have the business entity, make transferring the domain into that entity one of your first steps that you do. Yeah, because that's great. that way, yep. you know, that way it's also off of your shoulders, right? If yes. You're the reasonable one, but you also want to show good faith to your business yep. partners. I and, agree. You know, agree. and this is a good way to do it. And then, you know, if things do go sideways, well, now you have an entity. And so that it's not quite as simple for someone to say, I'm going to take control. Yes, yeah. usernames and passwords do that, but... You know, it, 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 it it's right, right. not not as easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and I think that should be in your working agreement. Uh, you know, I just recently started a new a new business uh, a few months ago. And in the working agreement, you know, we always put in there, here's some benchmarks. And when we hit 
this, you know, this is an experiment right now, you know, the next six months or so, we're trying to do this, see if we can get this up and running. But once it does get up and running, these things are going to happen. You know, yeah. we're going to create this, we're going to do an S corp, we're going to, you know, manage it. And you could put that domain, you know, Hey, all domains and emails and hosting will all be under the ownership of the LLC or whatever the entity is. Yep. I like that. Yep. That's good. Very cool. That's great. Cool. Good, good stuff. Today. Cool. Very cool. Very, Very cool. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Well, we'd love to, yeah, and we'd love to hear from you folks. Like you said, feedback at businessshow.co or come chat in the uh, small business support group, Facebook. Oh, here I'm doing it backwards. Businessshow.co slash Facebook will redirect you over there. And thank you so much for listening. We Absolutely. always enjoy having you. Yeah, thanks to our sponsors, of course, uh, square.com slash go slash SPS and LinkedIn got LinkedIn.com slash SPS. Check them out. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.